Hello, welcome to my channel, Another Bibliophile Reads. My name is Greg, and today I wanted to talk about a sense of place, how some authors really have this intuition, this, um, this love for a place that in their writings, they're writing of a location that they truly love. It's sort of as a subject that I've thought about a, a lot. Um, just the other night, my wife and I were um, taking a bowl of soup to her sister, who um, had uh, gone to the hospital with some minor surgery and was recovering. And um, we took the soup to her, then went out to dinner at a Mexican restaurant. And after driving out of that mes Mexican restaurant, my wife mentioned about how much she loves living in this section of Virginia. This is a section of Virginia that she spent a number of her teenage years in. Her father was in the military and um, sort of um, had posts in um, Germany and Colorado, but he was finally stationed um, here in Virginia during his final years when my wife was finished growing up. And um, she loves it here. She, she mentioned it, that she truly likes this part of the country. I grew up a little further north um, in Maryland. And, you know, I just don't really give a lot of thought to Maryland. I don't miss it. It wasn't a bad place to live, but um, I never got in tune with it. I, I, I never fell in love with that place. And that got me to thinking about authors who do fall in love with places to live. And they can't stop writing about the places where they live because they love that location so much. One of the authors that does this very well is Donald Harrington. I, I, as I mentioned in an earlier video, he does not get a lot of love on Booktube, even though he was just a really magnificent author. He was a college professor in art history got a job in Little Rock, Arkansas, a place he did not grow up in. But once he got down there, he started loving that place and getting in tune with the Arkansas Ozarks. And he started publishing, I believe, the 70s, maybe the early 80s, somewhere in that area. And he wrote a lot of historical fiction set in the Ozarks. And just, just the way he describes the landscape, the people, you get this feeling that, yeah, he, he, he just really found his home in Arkansas. And now I have never been to Arkansas, and the chances of my actually visiting it one day are rather on the slim side. But I appreciate his love of place and how he found, for better or worse, a place to call home. And um. Other authors have done that as well. I can think of um, James Elroy, the, the, the famous crime writer. And um, this was like 15, maybe even 20 years ago, or somewhere around there, where James Elroy was mentioning that um, he grew up around Los Angeles and he wrote his early books there. And then he got married and his marriage um, took him away from Los Angeles. But that marriage broke up. And um, he returned to Los Angeles. And his comment was, I felt like I was returning home because he is just in tune with that city. And almost all the books that I've read by him are set in Los Angeles. And you feel it on the page that this author belongs there. And I, I like that feeling, even though I have never been to Los Angeles. And um, Los Angeles, is not high on my list of places to visit. Other authors who have a similar feeling, I would say is William Faulkner. He wrote about Yachtnaw Patafa County. Now Yachtnaw Patafa County is technically fictional, but it is his home in Mississippi. And um, he just writes about a love of that place and all the people that grew up there. And it feels very true and very real and you just get this sense of place that Yachtnaw Patafa County is real 
because Yoknapatawpha County is just a fictionalized name over the real Mississippi. That too also applies to, I think, the author Ed McBain. He is an author of police procedurals and is Criminali's favorite writer. Now he writes about a city that is not called New York City in his novels. And then McDain once wrote, he had a very good reason for doing that. He said, if I have my police detectives go to, let's say, Third Street on a Thursday afternoon at three o'clock and park their car, someone's going to write him a letter saying, you know, they do streets, street sweeping on Thursday afternoons at that time. And the police officers could not park their car there. And Ed McBain says, you know, I don't want to deal with that. So he, he calls his city something else. I don't remember off the top of my head what the name of his fictionalized city was, but it's New York City. Absolutely. And again, you get a feeling of an author who loves his city. That city is a place that he likes to call home. And when I think about that, now, New York City is a place that I have visited and probably could have been convinced to move into. I had a job offer in Brooklyn, New York once, and I'm sort of sorry I never took up that opportunity. But when I get back to it about this sense of place, it, it, it gives me this feeling like, why don't I love a location? Why don't I call a place home? Now, I technically own a very nice house in this section of Virginia. I have no com complaints about the, the fact that I, I own this home, but I don't love this area of Virginia. It's, I'm not in tune with it. I feel no affinity for it. I feel like, okay, I'm a resident, I own property, but you know, it's just a part of the world where I could take it or leave it because there's other nice homes in other parts of the country that I would probably be totally indifferent to as well, because I don't have this sense of place. I don't call a location home. And in ways I, I feel sort of like I've lost out that um, I'm like a, a wanderer in this country, living from place to place, but never calling a place home. So, what authors do these viewers know who, who have a, a sense of place, a place to call home? There is um, an author um, of the Anne of Green Cables. I believe she also has a very strong sense of place, even though I've never read a word by that author. I've just, I've just heard people mentioning how, how in tune she might be to her sense of place. So I'd like some comments. What authors have a very good sense of place? Or if you're a booktuber, talk about your favorite authors who have a sense of place, a place to call home. Thank you for watching and keep on reading.